do you get business funding for your side hustle? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. As a matter of fact, today we're going to talk about everything you need to know to be able to get the money you need to launch a side hustle and even what you need to know and how to get funding as that side hustle potentially becomes a full-blown business. I'm even going to introduce one of my favorite funders for 2021, one we just discovered within the last 90 days that was on our funding challenge that this is what they do do is side hustle type financing amongst many other options that will work for you funding everything you need to know to be able to get set up to get money for a side hustle i mean we are going to go through a lot today uh, to make sure that you can get funded whether it be your side hustle just getting started or again to grow that side hustle into a primary business so we got a lot to cover let's dive in so side hustles all the rage right lift door dash instacart uh, many more of these. This is the new way of running a business and doing a business. I mean, nowadays, excuse me, let me try to get the camera a little bit set up there. Uh, nowadays, you know, millions of people are now working in these kind of uh, gig or in this kind of gig economy, and more and more continue to jump on board. So, some examples: house cleaning, washing, detailing automobiles, making jewelry, baking more. Um, some of my side hustles are even, you know, working with land, flipping land, uh, you know, getting things like boats, cars, planes, renting them out when you're not using them. So, so many things you could do here. Again, uh, automobiles, washing and detailing automobiles, but also uh, being able to lease automobiles. People now are even taking a primary vehicle, being able to rent it out on places like Turo, and they're making so much money, they're buying a bunch of vehicles. Also making the entire business of that. So even though their overhead is not is relatively low with these kind of side hustles, uh, there's going to be costs associated with it. So how do you fund it? You know, how do you get a side hustle launched? How do you get the money that you need? Well, first, obviously, is bootstrapping it, doing it yourself, uh, meaning that you're funding it yourself. So you'd invest the initial amount out of your own assets or out of your own credit to be able to get started. You'd purchase the cleaning supplies, the jewelry making supplies, the baking ingredients, gas, whatever it is that you would need to actually launch the side hustle. Now, if you want to expand with newer, or better equipment, embroidery machine, baking molds, new vinyl cutting machine, obviously the equipment you need depends on the side hustle you're working with, then you might go to friends and family. 75% of entrepreneurs do. So 75% of entrepreneurs go to friends and family to get money to launch a business or even a side hustle. A lot of people are tipping into their own personal assets to do this. A lot of others are using consumer credit cards. Matter of fact, large majority of people to launch a primary business or side hustle, they're actually using credit cards to do it. But you got to be careful there because, you know, utilization is 30% of your FICO score. So that's, if I look at the top three mistakes that I see entrepreneurs make financially, this is one of the top ones. They use consumer credit to fund the side hustle to, uh, to fund the primary business. And the reason that's a problem is that, first of all, what I found is two things that are steadfast rules of business. Everything will cost considerably more than you anticipate it will, and everything will take longer than you anticipate it will. As a matter of fact, when we uh, at Credit Suite try to determine how long it's going to be to get something done, we come with our best reasonable guess, and we double that time. We come with our best reasonable guess of how much it's going to cost, and we double that as well. We found that that gets us closer to what the real cost and real time frame is than just giving it our best estimate based on all the information we have. So the problem is when you launch a sod hustle, it cost, typically costs more money than you think it's going to. Then you think, I'm just going to put this 5000 on a credit card. And then all of a sudden it becomes 15000 You max out your credit cards, you lower your scores, and you ruin your ability to get really good financing you could have got for the side hustle just because you're over-utilizing consumer credit cards because it costs more than you thought it would. So don't fall into that trap. Make sure that you're not using consumer credit cards to fund your business. Now, by the way, if this makes sense along the way, give me a like, give me a love, share this with people that you know, and also just tell me where you're from. I always like to give everybody a shout out to say, hey, Ty, it's it's Wilma from Nashville, wherever it may be. You don't have to say you're Wilma. Just say your name. Tell me where you're from. I always like to give you a shout out. So what happens if it becomes more than a side hustle? What happens if you start launching this as a side hustle and then all of a sudden it grows and you need to really build it into a separate business? Well, in that case, the truth is you can't get business funding if your side hustle isn't an official business. There's all different kinds of ways you can get money, but you can't get money for a business if you don't legitimately have a business. So at this point, if the little side hustle that you're doing becomes something where you need to launch it as a primary business, there are things you need to do. And by the way, this is something you really want to consider. Okay, If I'm going to earn any kind of income on anything, 
I'm launching it as a business. So let me give you an example. Every vehicle I owned is owned in a separate LLC. Uh, a lot of people in my circle that deal with real estate, every real estate piece of property they own is owned in a separate LLC. If I'm going to go work with DoorDash or do anything as a side hustle, I'm going to launch that through my own LLC. Okay. Now, I'm not an attorney. This isn't legal advice. I'm not an accountant, and this isn't accounting advice. But the reason I do that is to give me some layer of protection. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have my car, and I decide to rent it as a side hustle, as a side gig, make some money when I'm not using it. Well, what happens if somebody goes and gets drunk and crashes my car and kills somebody, or they kill themselves? You know, all of a sudden, in the attorneys in these cases want to sue everybody, the owner of the car, the insurance company, everybody involved, right? So now all of a sudden, I'm getting sued for that. So an LLC gives you some layer of protection because the LLC actually owns the car. So you could sue the LLC, but the only asset the LLC owns is the car. So again, not a lot you're going to win by trying to go after that LLC. But personally, I've got a bunch of assets, right? So if they come after me personally, well, then, then I could become a big target because they can come after all of my personal funds. So again, I'm not an attorney, not legal advice, but this is why you probably want to consider even as a side hustle, launching it as a separate business because it gives you some layer of protection. Let's say you're launching a cleaning service as a side hustle. Well, what happens if you get hurt on the job? Somebody else gets hurt. You break something of great value in the house that you're cleaning. All these things mean that you could be susceptible to a lawsuit. They might come after you legally. Okay, so again, to avoid that, you might want to consider putting these things in an LLC, putting these things in a separate business name to create some layer of protection. So things to think about. Virginia from Charlotte's in the house. What's up? And Corwin, what's up from Phoenix, Texas? K-Tex is in the house. Sanchez, Aaron, Aaron from California. Thanks for tuning in again. Tell me where you're from. I always like to say hello if you don't mind. So how do you launch it as a primary business? Well, First of all, get it set up as an entity, get an EIN, get an LLC, uh, you know, get a corporation set up. Now, if you're going to do this, here's the order you should consider doing it. First, make sure the name you want's available. Okay, make sure it's available in your secretary of state. So you can go to Google and type in Florida secretary of state to see if the name's available. If the name's available, see if the domain's available and grab the domain. I wouldn't have the name creditsuite.com as our credit suite is our company name if creditsuite.com wasn't available. So if the domain's available, buy the domain on a place like GoDaddy. Then uh, go, once you own the domain, once you know the entity is set up with Secretary of State or you know the entity is available in your state, then go do this stuff. Then go get a business address and preferably like a, a virtual office through a place like Regis, Alliance, or DaVinci. Those are the only three reasonable sources. Get a business phone number. List the four num phone number with 411. Now that I have the phone number and address and that website set up because I own the domain, I'm, now I know my, my email, for example, is going to be info at creditsuite.com. Now I go set up the Secretary of State. Let me explain to you why I'm doing it this way. A lot of people, one of the biggest mistakes, and I told you about one of the other biggest mistakes I see business owners make, one of the other three business biggest mistakes I see business owners make is that they come in and they set up their entity first in the Secretary of State. Then they go get their address, their phone number, their website, their email. Then they forget to go back to Secretary of State and update that information. Let me explain why it's such a big deal. Every lender, the very first check they do is they take your application and check it against Secretary of State to make sure your business is real, that the application is not fraud. Well, if nothing on your application matches Secretary of State data, they can't verify it's accurate. And they oftentimes deny applications for credit card loans and credit cards. It's so basic. It's so simple. But it's one of the number one reasons I see entrepreneurs get denied. So what I found is the right order to do this is – Make sure your business name is available in the Secretary of State, then get the domain. And once you own the domain, then go get your address, then go get your phone number, then go set up Secretary of State. Now you only have to do it once. You have your business, your virtual office, you have your email address, your website set up, you have your phone number set up. Now you can set up Secretary of State with all the correct information. Then go get your EIN number from IRS.gov completely free. Then take the IRS. Uh, .gov and the Secretary of State documents, and then go set up a business bank account. That's the order of events of exactly how to do it. Make sure names available. Go get domain from, well, from GoDaddy, wherever you can get the domain. Then get the address. Then get the phone number. Then set up Secretary of State. Then set up EIN. Then set up bank account. If you do it the right way, that's going to put you on the right path 
to being able to get funding for your business. Okay. Now, once you've done so, now you can start getting actual real money for that envy. I mean, even if you don't have cash flow, credit, collateral, now we can actually start funding the business because the business is legitimate. So what we want to do now is we want to start finding some vendors that we can basically use to grow the business. And we want to start applying for those vendors. Okay. We especially ones that report to the business credit reporting agencies. So if you want to be able to take credit cards at this point, also, you might want to get a merchant account set up. So if your side hustle is going to require credit cards, you can go to PayPal, you can go to Square, you can go to Stripe, or you can look online and find somebody that can help you set up an actual merchant account. Now, again, you got to pay attention to details here. You want to make sure all the information is congruent. It's all the same. It's all consistent. That's why I followed that order of telling you when to do what. Okay, you want to make sure because if you get your address, your phone number, everything set up first, now, when you go get your Dunn's number with Dunn and Bradstreet and start applying for vendor credit, set up your secretary of state, your EIN number. When you do all that stuff, now you already have the same address, same phone number that you're going to use for all that setup. So now that you have it, now we can start setting up the website. Now you can come in and get that merchant account set up. Now you can make sure that all that information is consistent. Very important. Okay, and Sean, what's up from Sacramento coming in? And Daryl from Dallas and Shiloh from Texas is coming in. James from Georgia, thanks for saying hello. Appreciate you tuning in. Okay, so now let's make the leap. Let's make the leap from a hustle to the actual bustle, right? And so in order to do this, what we want to do is, to, again, start applying for vendor credit that can help us actually build the business. In order to do this, we want to get our Duns number for free from Dun & Bradstreet, creditsuite.com forward slash Duns. Or you can just type in Duns number if you want into Google, free Duns, and you can take a link there. I just put a shortcut link at creditsuite.com forward slash Duns. So if you go to creditsuite.com forward slash Duns, you can go right to your Duns number. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to fill out. And guess what they're going to want? Everything I've already told you to get. So now they might want a bank reference. They want your business address, your business phone number, your EIN, your entity type, all of that you've now done. Speaking of which, when you set up your entity, probably go with an LLC. Go with a corporation, an LLC. Every entity has its own purpose of why you'd set it up. If it's a really small business you're running, a, an S corporation makes sense with an LLC on top of it. it. Makes the best sense. Way better than being a sole proprietor. Again, being a sole proprietor, you are the business. I'm not an attorney. It's not legal advice. But if you get sued, the business gets sued. You are the business. So maybe an LLC, corporation, choose those entity types. Now we want to get your Dunn's number set up with Dunn and Bradstreet. Now, once you've done so, now we can start getting credit with vendors that report to the reporting agencies. Um, Strategic Network Solutions, Supply Works, Granger, Uline, any of these will give you credit when you have none. If you followed the fundability steps I've given you, they shouldn't require prepaid orders and they should give you credit reports to the reporting agencies. So now you can use these kind of starter vendors to be able to start getting credit and money that you really need to grow the business. I'll typically give you a month or two months to pay them back. So now you don't need money, cash, money from family, friends, your own credit cards to fund the business. Now we're using OP, other people's money, right? OPM, other people's money to fund the business. These vendors, they're giving us 15 days, 30 days, 60 days to be able to pay them back. We're coming in, we're getting credit. We're using it for the stuff we need to grow the business. We pay that stuff off promptly. As soon as we can pay it off as early as we can, we want to. Now that's going to give us good business credit scores. Now we establish a business credit profile. Now we start uh, establishing business credit scores. And then this starts opening up the doors for us to being able to come in and get more credit, okay? To being able to get credit in the business name, credit that reports to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax. And so when we have about five of these accounts reported, now we can start to get almost all store credit, Amazon and Best Buy and Apple and as Staples, Office Depot, Lowe's, Home Depot, even Nordstrom and Macy's offer this kind of business credit. We don't need to verify revenue. We don't need to have good personal credit. They don't even check it. We don't need to look at a uh, half collateral. So I'm talking about a way you can launch a side hustle 
and then start making money. Now we've set up a real business for hundreds of dollars. I gave you really cheap path to be able to set up everything with the business. Now we use these hundreds of dollars we put into launching the, the side hustle into its own business. And we started getting funding for the business right away with these starter vendors. Then we start getting Amazon and all this stuff in the business name without a personal guarantee or credit check. What I'm doing here, what I'm mapping out is literally a path for the business from inception to fund itself. So it doesn't need all your personal contribution, your family money, your friends member money. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm going to talk about big funding as we carry on here. I'm going to talk about how to get large amounts of funding as well. But so far, what we've created is the business now has its own credit profile, its own credit score. The business can literally start to fund itself now. Okay, so now we're expanding the side hustle. There are a few that will do this, even if your business credit score isn't great, now we can start being able to get more of these accounts and start building out our business credit. And that's helping us get the materials we need, buy the products, the services that we need to resell on Amazon or whatever it is. Maybe we've got a car wash and we're a buddy of mine launched a mobile detailing company. Well, the trailer, the supplies, everything that's needed, you can use all this business credit to start buying. So now we're literally funding the business without depleting our cash reserves, which is very important. And Felicia says, I'm late, but I'm here. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it, Felicia. I just threw up the link as well for you to get the Duns number for free. It's 100% free. So make sure you do that. Tamika's bringing people into the room. Thanks, Tamika. I'm glad you're getting value. If you're getting value, hit the like button, hit the love button. If you haven't said hello, tell me where you're tuning in from so I can give you a shout out. I threw on the screen, the link to the Duns number, you can get 100% for free. Keep in mind, Dun & Bradstreet will try to probably sell you stuff you don't need. You don't need it. So if you don't want to be sold by them, don't get on the phone with them. You're ever, only ever going to ask you to get on the phone if they're trying to sell you stuff. Just some things to keep in mind. So now we've got these initial vendor credit accounts. And now we can start funding the actual business, okay? Now the side hustle can start to become a primary business, even a secondary business. Now it comes time to get funding, financing, loans, credit lines. How do we do that? Well, first of all, based on the side hustle, what do we have? Do we have purchase orders, for example? So we might have purchase orders we need filled. Now we got people wanting to buy whatever it is that our primary, our, our hustle started to become more of a primary business and we've got purchase orders. Well, I can get funding to get those filled. 95% of those purchase orders, I can get money from other people, funders, to be able to fund those purchase orders. So now if I can come in and get purchase orders, I would get them because I can use other people's money other funders to be able to fund those purchase orders and give me the money that I need to start selling products and services and fulfilling purchase orders without coming out of my pocket for money. Another thing I might want to do is start getting credit lines. So I can start to get credit lines here, even as a brand new startup business, pre-revenue, no revenue through a program called Credit Line Hybrid. So the way Credit Line Hybrid works, you can usually get five times or more of the highest credit limit account you have now. So let's say you have $10,000 credit limit. Well, with this, you can get five times that, fifty dollars to $150,000 in funding. It's 0% rates for up to 18 months. Keeps your payments low as you're getting the side hustle to primarily maybe even become a, a primary business for you. A lot of these report to the business credit reporting agencies. We're further establishing this business credit profile and score that's going to help open up the doors for even more funding for us as well. Now, in order to get proof, it's based on good personal credit. So you can get up to 150 grand, but you really need to have a 680 FICO score or higher. Maybe you don't. That's okay. We'll talk about other funding options here. But another option is to use a guarantor. Use a family member, use a friend, use a potential investor that maybe wants to contribute and be able to make money um, off what you're doing. So for example, let's say my credit's bad and, and let's say that I need money to get a business off the ground. I could go to my dad and ask my dad for money, but he would liquidate stocks to give it to me. But instead I could say, dad, can I use your credit to qualify for these credit lines? And the only way you lose is if I default because a lot of them report to the business credit reporting agencies. Doesn't even adversely affect your credit. Might be an easier way from a family member, a friend or friend to get involved. If you're like me, I don't like to ask people for money unless I absolutely have to. But I do like to give my friends opportunities. So I have my friends, I, we have a, a rule between each other that if e any of us run into an opportunity 
to invest that we run it by each other and let that per- then we decide individually if we want that. So if I have opportunities to invest in businesses or other ventures, I run that by my friends. They run opportunities by me. And as a result, we win together. Okay, a buddy of mine invested into this really risky uh, brand new business got off the ground. The thing's about ready to go public. And we make tons of money on it. All because he brought me in and goes, hey, man, you got four hours to make the decision. We got to get money in in four hours. I don't know if you want to do this. But him and I know that even if I lost everything, I wouldn't hold it against him. I appreciate that opportunity. The reason I'm telling you this is that when you're launching a new venture that could be successful, other people might want to help you with using their credit for this program, for example, because you're giving them a rate of return. You're paying them interest or you're giving ownership or stock equity in the business. So there's a reason that they may want to help you. So even if your credit's not good, half the people we help in this program are using somebody else's credit to qualify. Let's also not talk about really easy to qualify money. If you're going to accept payments from customers, think about PayPal, think about Square, think about Stripe. All of them make it really easy if you have six months worth of payments to be able to get a really low cost loan. The loans are not based on credit scores. They're not based on credit quality. They're just based on how much money you're running through PayPal, Square, or Stripe. A lot of them don't even charge interest. They just give you one set fee. So it's fairly cheap, affordable money without a credit check. And you could typically borrow as much as 30% of whatever you're processing processing through PayPal, Square, and Stripe. So other really easy ways to be able to get money here. Another one of my favorites is called Fundbox. You can go to creditsuite.com forward slash Fundbox. And Fundbox is a great way. If you have six months time in business to be able to get a low credit line, a a, a less than $10,000 credit line. But as your business grows, that credit line will grow upwards of 150 grand. So a buddy of mine the other day goes, hey, I'm applying for this $100,000 loan. What do you think? I said, yeah, good deal. But also go get this credit line. He went and applied and got $35,000 credit line like that with a half a percent interest every week. The money's outstanding. So really cheap money if he keeps it outstanding for only a short period of time. So Fundbox, PayPal, Square, Stripe, six months into this thing, great ways to be able to actually fund your business. And here's where you can get more information on uh, credit line hybrid as well. Now, uh, uh, Eric coming in from New York. What's up, Eric? I was just up there for Thanksgiving uh, in in New York City. It was awesome. Tommy, is there a a possibility for a DMB? Is there a possibility paying for DMB is coming? Um, I don't know what your question is, Tommy, so ask again. But currently paying to DMB doesn't count as a trade line of your business credit report. Not as sure if that's what you're asking or not. Curtis Ray says, hey, I'm here. Oh, got to start over, but I'm going to get a good job. Curtis, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Curtis says, I'm trying to find a business now to invest into. Great. Well, all the, a lot of the funding we're going to talk about today will work with you. And be here now says, my credit's worth $769. Uh, that credit line hybrid's a great program for you to consider. And here's the link, creditsuite.com forward slash CLH. As a matter of fact, I also mentioned Fundbox. Here's the link for Fundbox. If you want to get approved for Fundbox, I love it. It's my favorite credit line of all credit lines. We do more uh, funding with Fundbox than any other source that sends them business. And the reason for that is, is because every time we get a client approved for funding, we send them to Fundbox to get an additional credit line. Every time we can't get somebody approved for funding, we send them to Fundbox to get them a credit line. Credit, one of the easiest ways I've ever seen to get money, and I threw that link up on the page as well. Uh, now, here is another alternative. There's some a couple other alternatives as well, but some other alternatives I want to talk about here include merchant cash advances, cash flow financing. If you have six months in business, you can borrow as much as 12, 15, 20% of whatever you process in credit cards or whatever you process in uh, or having cash flow going through your bank account. And those are available through all kinds of different funders. So those are great sources as well. I talked about ways to be able to tap into somebody else's credit through Credit Line Hybrid. You also can tap into your own stocks, bonds, 401ks, IRAs, or somebody else's. With 401k financing, you can borrow as much as 100% of the value of a 401k. With securities financing, you can borrow as much as 90% of the value of stocks and bonds. And you still earn the interest on the stocks and bonds. Think about it. It's ridiculous. You got money invested in the stock market, earning you a rate of return. Then you get a credit line against it, still keep the stocks in place, still earning a rate of return. 
Then you actually get a 5% interest rate credit line you can use to grow, to fund a business. You're double dipping using the money for two purposes. And it can be your stocks and bonds or somebody else's. So some other really good ways here to be able to get money. Tommy says, will DMB within the near future uh, change new business for a numbers? Uh, again, Tommy, still not exactly clear on what this is. Within the near future, charge new business for numbers. No, they won't. Here's why. I don't think. The Dunn's number, and what, what Tommy's saying here is, will Dunn and Bradstreet charge for the Dunn's number in the future? And I don't think it'll ever happen, and here's why. The Dunn's number is used worldwide. The Australian government uses it, the U.S. government uses it, the United Nations uses it, many worldwide organizations use it. So let me give you an example, Tommy. If I want to be a contractor for the U.S. government, I'm required to have a Dunn's number. I have to have one. So that's why I don't think they'll ever charge for it, because so many governments require the Dunn's number that they can't, they can't, it can't be a requirement if you have to charge for it. Dun and Bradstreet can't start all of a sudden charging for a Dunn's number when the government requires everybody have its Dunn's number to even work for them. So because the Australian government, the United Nations, the U.S. government, all these world trade organizations, all these governments require a Dunn's, then I don't think it's ever going to be out of charge. I think it's always going to be for free. But DMB will convince you that you need to pay for it, which is why you don't want to get on the phone with them. You don't need to pay for the Dunn's number. Creditsuite.com forward slash Dunn's is for free. If you have three accounts on your Dunn and Bradstreet credit report, that will activate your credit profile. If you call DMB, they will tell you you need to pay them $1,500 to get your Dunn's and activate your credit profile. I just told you how to do it for free. So I saved you $1,500 bucks right there. KTEC says, does your personal balance be a zero in order to get approved credit line? It doesn't. Credit line hybrid, they want your, your utilization to be less than 30%. If you're higher than that, between 30 and 40%, you could still get approved. You typically uh, just won't get approved for as much money. Okay, yeah, they do pull your credit for credit line hybrid, but to get pre-approved, it's a soft pull. So you can find out how much you can get a pre-approved for same day. Then you only ever have hard inquiries once you actually say, okay, I'm ready to go apply for the money. And uh, Chucky says, does a B, uh, uh, Chuck, he says, does the PPP loan on our business accounts from last year count as a credit line? It does not. That does not count as an actual credit line. Um, it's actually a loan. It's a PPP government loan. So it's definitely not count as a credit line and it doesn't report in your business credit reports. And Felicia says, what kind of funds can you apply for now? I just bought a business. Uh, but have to furnish the kitchen. We just talked about a lot of the ways. So if you go back to the beginning of this and Felicia, it is on Facebook at credit suite at facebook.com forward slash credit suite and go over the beginning. Some of the options we talked about here is using starter vendor credit. We talked about using 401k financing, securities-based financing for IRA stocks, bonds. We talked about using credit line hybrid. We talked about purchase order financing as well. We talked about using PayPal, Square, Stripe for financing. We talked about cash flow financing and merchant cash advances as well, all of ways to be able to fund it. Also, two others I want to throw in is if you need to buy inventory or equipment, there is inventory or equipment financing as well. As a matter of fact, at the bottom of my slides, you see this link, creditsuite.com forward slash live-27. That link will take you to a guide with 27 of these funding options. Now, one of my favorite funding options here for 2021 is called Giggle Finance. I love it, Giggle Finance. They came on to our funding challenge last month in November. You can find them at gigglefinance.com. First of all, it's real easy to get approved. You can get approval in minutes, get funding same day. They'll instantly uh, 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 fund a debit card or transfer to you. There's no credit score requirements. And they'll apply, approve you typically very easily within five minutes for $5,000 to launch a gig business. That's what they call it. It's like a side gig business, right? A side hustle. So this company, Giggle Finance, their whole purpose of Giggle Finance is just to be able to fund what you're actually talking about here. So again, for a side hustle, this is one of the best ways you can actually fund a side hustle because it's specifically for that purpose. Uh, most businesses launch and need $10,000. They give you five of them. So real easy way to get the money you need to launch a side hustle. And they're very specific just to side hustle businesses. And Thomas is looking for investor to help but three new technology products in country, no one else has. They go international. They all help. Okay, so what you probably want, Thomas, is you probably want venture capital or angel investing. We're not talking about either one of those today, but if you go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite, we've got training there on, uh, on angel investors, how to get them. 
venture capitalist, how to get them. And we've got training on how to put together your pitch deck to pitch to investors and, and equi- or, or venture capitalists and angel investors. Remember, there's really two types of money you're going to get. Debt financing, everything I've talked about here today. You're taking on debt that has to be paid back. Credit lines, loans, credit cards. Then there's called equity financing. You're not taking on debt. You're bringing in a partner that's going to have equity ownership into the actual business. Okay, so equity financing is angel investors, venture capital. That's what you probably want, Thomas. So go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite, training on angel investors, training on venture capitalists, training on putting together your pitch deck, everything you'll need to get those kind of pri- of investors in, uh, um, involved. Be here now. I'm just starting a business, so I don't want anyone pulling my score. Uh, I froze it. You don't have to. But if I'm just starting a business, I want to know how much money I'm going to get. So with Credit Line Hybrid, if you give us a call with that, we can connect you with a funding source that won't do an inquiry until you say, I'm ready to go and get my money, but at least find out how much money you can get. There's no hard inquiry to figure that out. Uh, by the way, if you go get most kind of loans or credit lines as a startup, there will be a hard inquiry when you actually go to get the funding. But if you want to avoid inquiries altogether, that's when you want to go with the business credit route. Because if you follow the steps as I map them out for you, then you won't have any hard inquiries on your credit report for that, uh, for business credit building. Shiloh says, if I start the process with a company last year, but never finished, do I contact the same person to get set up? Just give us a call and let us run through that with you. The reason I say that is that if you're talking about more than likely, a lot of things have changed from last year to this year. So we can at least listen to your scenario and say, oh, you should go apply here. Go apply there. We'll even give you a contact. Keep in mind, we never charge you a dime of money to help with financing. If you want a loan or a credit line, give us a call because we're like your advocate for free. We'll say, oh, 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 here's the five kinds of funding you can get. Here's exactly where to go to apply. We'll even give you introductions to those places. And it doesn't cost any money to have us help you do that. So if we can help you, Shyla, uh, please let us know. Here's the link for giggofinancing.com. We threw that up as well. And uh, we went ahead and my team went to work behind the scenes. This is Keith. He's always the one typing in the links here. Just so you guys know, if you ever run into Keith on one of our social media pages, say hi to him. He's the guy that when I mention something automatically creates some kind of crazy link to it. So I mentioned angel investing. Here's our YouTube vein video that will help you on angel investors. And uh, be here now says no equity investors. So if you don't want equity investors, then again, business credit without inquiries, or give us a call, Credit Line Hybrid. We can at least get your pre, uh, get your pre approved for that. K Tex says, "Thanks, Ty. I got scammed out twenty thousand by a fake realtor." Uh, sorry to hear that, K Tex. Felicia says, "Awesome." And Thomas is interesting. Uh, yes, one's a nonprofit, the other are not. Uh, they have letter of intent also with famous people. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's the first time I've ever sneezed on a live stream. Well, twelve years one sneeze. I guess that's a pretty good rate. Okay, so that's good to know, Thomas. And hopefully, what I've given you out there will help you uh, get the money that you need in the door. So to recap, a lot of things to consider here to day basically launch a side hustle business. But keep in mind that it makes sense for your protection to launch it under its its own separate business, like an LLC. Even as a side hustle, most people do. As I mentioned in the beginning. I own every vehicle I own is in a separate LLC. Every property I own is in a separate LLC. And uh, my mentor is a trust and estates attorney. So he's taught me pretty well how to keep my stuff protected. Something to consider. If you're going to launch uh, a side hustle under an entity, we talked about everything you need to know. From address, phone number, set up the exact order of what you need to do to set the business up. Now it's time to fund it. We talked about building business credit and using that as a way for the side hustle to fund itself where you never need other money, no inquiries, no credit checks, no collateral cash flow needed, just using business credit to fund the entire thing. And then we talked about, I feel pretty confident over 15 different ways to find fund your side hustle from credit line hybrid credit lines to purchase order financing to equipment inventory financing to funding through PayPal Square Stripe credit lines through Fundbox we talked about giggle financing which is specifically for this purpose uh, if you want access to even more we've got a great guide at creditsuite.com forward slash live 27 look at the bottom of the screen right here you can see uh, this link that'll get you to our free guide of 27 killer ways to get money next time we're going to talk about loan process everything you need to know to expedite it 
and to be able to turn a potential denial into an approval, all the stuff you need to know to get approved. And as I mentioned, don't forget, if you need help with funding, just call us. It's kind of what we do. We work with over a thousand funding sources, every legitimate type of funding. We can get you access to our paid product, a business credit builder to help with your fundability, build business credit really quick uh, with our team. You can also just give us a call and we'll help direct you to lenders that will help you with loans and credit lines. All you have to do is give us a call for that consultation. We'll do a fundability check for you for free, help you figure out the stuff that needs to be fixed or launch and get your fundability right from the beginning. If you think you have business credit, we'll help you get your business credit reports for no cost. It saves you 250 bucks. We'll give you tips and tactics to improve your business credit. And we'll do a funding qualification. We'll tell you all the funding you can qualify for now. It happens real easily at uh, by giving us a call at 877-600-2487, or you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash console. And- if you got value, like, subscribe, share, and then also go to creditsuite.com at the top right of our page. You can access our social links, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, daily tips. We have one minute tips on Insta and TikTok. Uh, we also have a thousand plus videos on YouTube, a podcast you can listen to on the go. Everything you need to know to be able to get the capital to start grow a business. It's all available on our social channels and you can access it at the top right of our page, Credit Suite dot com um so that being said and ktex again sorry to hear about that you getting scammed hopefully you get that figured out hopefully we can help you get the money you need uh yes uh joe Mani says can this be watched again it can be watched the end you're tuning in on facebook so if you go to facebook.com forward slash credit suite you can see this live stream and the rest of ours and you can see them all in their entirety here's the number to give us a call for the free consultation and Curtis says, how can I use this to help others get funding for their business and make money for myself as well? That is what's called being a partner. And Credit Suite has the biggest partner program in the country where you can offer business credit and financing as a service turnkey through us. We give you all the marketing materials, uh, the back office to manage it, the products to sell, the training, everything you need to succeed as a partner or what's called our business loan broker, however you want to refer to it. Um, and you can easily go to our YouTube channel. Let's see if, if I can get that in somehow. Uh, and you can also, don't forget, if you want, you can also go to creditsuite.com forward slash follow uh, to be able to get more tips and tactics. So that might be where all of our social pages are. So Curtis, if you go to creditsuite.com forward slash partner, there's information about our partner program. And if you look on YouTube, we just did a training last week on how to become a business loan broker. That training was two hours. It walks through every single thing you need to know, Curtis, on how to launch a business, primary or secondary business, um, with you offering business credit financing as a partner. So you can go to creditsuite.com forward slash partner, or Curtis, you can also just go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite, look at our most recent videos. You'll see our two hour one from Tuesday on how to become a business loan broker. Um, imagine if you even search how to become a business loan broker on YouTube, that'll come up probably pretty quick as well. So that will give you the information you need there. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on our next trading. We're talking about how to crush it in the underwriting process to be able to get faster approvals and get more approvals and less denials. It's exactly what we'll be talking about next time. Look forward to talking to you then. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.